Sunday Showcase, highlighting some of the best audio storytelling found anywhere. All right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. And welcome to the Sonic Society number 733. I'm David Alt. This week, the masters of audio reimaginings, John Barber and Mark Rose and the Voices, perform Archibald McLeish's The Fall of the City, with some samples from our own Jack J. Ward's Great Day for a War to provide present-day context. The Fall of the City follows the collapse of a city under an unnamed dictator and the ambiguous relationships humans have with freedom. We want freedom, but we also like order and structure. How much freedom and liberty are we willing to give up to enjoy order and structure? Because of this ambiguity, we both fear and welcome the conqueror, Jack. <laughs> I I am not afraid. I do welcome, and I'm very honored to have my unproduced play mingled with the incredible Archibald McLeish. Thanks, John. Thanks, Mark. And this new classic begins right here. On the Sonic Society. <laughs> gentlemen this broadcast comes to you from the city listeners over the curving air have heard from furthest off frontiers of foreign hours mountain time ocean time of the islands of waters after the islands some of them waking when noon here is night there some where noon is the first few stars they see or the last one For three days the world has watched this city, not for the common occasions of brutal crime or the usual violence of one sort or another, or coronations of kings or popular festivals. No, for stranger and disturbing reasons. The resurrection from death and the tomb of a dead woman. Each day for three days, There has come to the door of her tomb at noon a woman buried. The terror that stands at the shoulder of our time touches the cheek with this. The flesh winces. There have been other omens in other cities, but never of this sort and never so credible. In a time like ours, seemings and portents signify. Ours is a generation when dogs howl and the skin crawls on the skull with its beasts foreboding. All men now alive with us have feared. We have smelled the wind in the street that changes weather. We have seen the familiar room grow unfamiliar. The order of numbers alter. The expectation cheat the expectant eye. The appearance defaults with us. Here in this city, The wall of the time cracks. We take you now to the great square of this city. Welcome to Reimagined Radio a program about radio storytelling. I'm Jack Armstrong. With each episode, we combine dialogue, sound effects, and music to engage your listening imagination. This episode is no different, and here to tell you about it is John Barber, producer and host. Thank you, Jack. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Reimagined Radio. Each episode of Reimagined Radio we have offered this year has provided tribute to radio programs, producers, writers, or actors. This episode tips the microphone to the Columbia Workshop, perhaps the most important American anthology radio program and its mission to explore and present new forms of radio storytelling. 
One of these experiments was the broadcast of The Fall of the City, the first American verse play for radio. Written by Archibald MacLeish, Pulitzer Prize-winning poet and Librarian of Congress, this radio drama focuses on the collapse of a city under an approaching conqueror. A radio drama written by a poet was unheard of at the time the fall of the city was first broadcast, April 11, 1937. Our tribute to the Columbia Workshop acknowledges its mission of experimental radio storytelling and McLeish's use of the still new radio medium to explore its potential for sharing compelling stories with distant listeners. We also hope to pay tribute to McLeish as an artist concerned with the human condition and using his talents as a writer, a poet, a librarian for the greater good. In this 1963 interview at Amherst College, McLeish responds to a question about the changing nature of the arts and the relationship between artists and audiences. So far as the interest in the arts goes, although some quite remarkable things are, are happening in the way of, well, for example, repertory theaters throughout the country, the Guthrie thing in Minneapolis is a prime example in the, the uh, arena in Washington, is it? Yes, Washington. These are remarkable theaters, and, and uh, the audience support seems to be very considerable, and there's a great deal of audience interest in music. But um, how um, substantial it is, how deep it goes, I don't know. That is, the arts always live on the, on the passionate love, adherence, and loyalty of people who deeply know and deeply care. Uh, there's never a very large audience for um, good new work, uh, although there is a large audience for good old work once good old work gets to be accepted. And so far as my reaction to it goes, I, I would simply have to say that I don't think any artist, judging from what I know about myself, and what I know about friends of mine whose, whose, whose qualities I really know, I don't think any artist thinks much about his, his audience. He's, he's uh, grateful to have readers or onlookers or whatever, listeners, depending on what his art is. But um, I don't think um, it's either encouraging or discouraging to him to uh, feel that there either is or isn't an enormous audience waiting for him. After all, he, he, he does what what his life is to do. It's, a, it's a, a commitment of one's life. It's a commitment that, that one doesn't choose. Uh, you do what you have to do. It occupies your whole life, your whole heart, every minute of your being. And if there is an audience, fine. You can probably eat a little better. If there isn't, uh, no. But it doesn't really make an awful lot of difference. For this episode, we combine The Fall of the City by McLeish with samples from Great Day for a War, by Jack J. Ward, founder and director of Mutual Audio Network and the Sonic Society, the two largest available online repositories and portals for radio dramas and podcasts. On the surface, Great Day for a War seems to be a story about media coverage of an escalating military invasion. But in fact, it's a story about the power of mass media to fabricate spectacle and conflict to benefit its own standing. Let's listen now to this reimagined radio performance of The Fall of the City, performed for you by the Willamette Radio Workshop and The Voices. Welcome to Global Web News Coverage. Please make a selection. You've chosen The Fall of the City. Click Yes to continue. Around the globe, on the web across all boundaries, transmitted simultaneously in 128 languages to more than 200 countries, Global Web Network News, the news you can trust with the people you know, Daniel Stone and Anna Marie Hammond. Good evening, I'm Anna Marie Hammond. Daniel Stone will join us shortly live from the central plaza of the city. But first, this general news. The environmental crisis in Greenland continues. Finn Siglerud from the Green Freedom Environmental Movement 
said the recent storms and flooding of the Newark has displaced more than 100,000 of its inhabitants and plunged the country into chaos. The World Trade Organization flatly denied that the Greenland situation is considered unimportant by the world markets and asserts that to date, there still is no definitive proof of global warming. Entertainment industries around the world are announcing the winners and losers of Sweeps Week. The action drama Intent to Kill, a serial about terrorists in our time, and the primetime soap Days of Song, which portrays the trials of Jennifer Song as she learns how to live the life of a single yet sexy soccer mom, were the winners worldwide. Log on to our website at globalwebnews.com to see the entire listing. This is Global Web Prime News. I'm Anna Marie Hammond. Joining me now from the city is Daniel Stone. Daniel, can you hear me? I'm here, Anne Marie. Can you describe what you see there for us, Daniel? We are here on the central plaza. We're well off to the eastward edge. There's a kind of terrace over the crowd here. It's precisely four minutes to 12. The crowd is enormous. It might be 10,000. It might be more. The whole square is faces. Opposite over the roofs are the mountains. It is quite clear. There are birds circling. We think they're kites by the look. They're very high. The tomb is off to the right somewhere we can't see for the great crowd. Close to us here are the cabinet ministers. They stand on a raised platform with awnings. The farmer's wives are squatting on the stones. Their children have fallen asleep on their shoulders. The heat is harsh. The light dazzles like metal. It dazes the air as the clang of a gong does. It is one minute to twelve now. So, Daniel, after six months of intense diplomacy, we're still waiting for an outcome. Do you have any sense of what will happen next? There's still no sign. They're still waiting. No one doubts that she will come. No one doubts that she will speak, too. Three times she has not spoken. Thank you, Daniel. We want to shift now to the border, where the president is addressing a coalition of troops. My fellow citizens, we stand here today in the face of approaching tyranny. Six months of negotiations have failed. Ten years of sanctions have not deterred this regime from its destructive course. We have worked through the United Nations and other channels of the world community to force the conqueror to step down. We have met with intimidation delays, and lies. Meanwhile, thousands have died at the hands of this tyranny, and thousands more toil in poverty, sickness, and fear under policies of intimidation, terror, and death. Our thoughts and prayers go out to those in their suffering. The time has come for us to cleave to the things that created this great city. Honor, justice, and an unswerving eye towards freedom. We want a land free of suffering and hunger and the hatred that brings war. We want most of all freedom. That which is the right of all people everywhere. How will we build this peace? I have set aside resources for humanitarian relief. The city will belong to its citizens once again. This is not an empty threat. We do not threaten. We promise. The conqueror should stop its advances on the city and leave within 48 hours, or be forced to withdraw and pay for its crimes. Thank you, and God bless. That was the president, speaking from the border, seeking to appear resolute in the face of the advancing conqueror. I'm joined now in the studio by Sheila McDonald from the Conservative Alliance. Sheila. With the imposed deadline fast approaching, what are the president's plans when time runs out? 
Anna Marie, in the past six months, the president worked very hard to send resources and aid workers into the city. The regime has cracked down on foreign nationals and aid workers have fled. Does this mean we're headed into another war that could send that region of the world into a descent from which it might never recover? I think that's the least of our worries. A coalition is at the border, seemingly ready to deploy its forces, but neighboring city-states will see this as an attack by foreign governments. Uh, I'm sorry, Sheila. Daniel Stone is live in the city and has a report for us. Daniel, what are you seeing now? Now it's 12. Now they are rising. Now the whole plaza is rising. Fathers are lifting their small children. The plume fans on the platform are motionless. There's no sound but the shuffle of shoe leather. Now even the shoes are still. We can hear the hawks. It's as quiet as that now. It is strange to see such throngs so silent. Nothing yet. Nothing's happened. Wait. There's a stir here to the right of us. They're turning their heads. The crowd turns. The cabinet ministers lean from the balcony. There's no sound. Only the turning. First, the waters rose with no wind. Listen, it is she. She's speaking. Then, the stones of the temple kindled without flame or tinder of maize leaves. They see her beyond us. The crowd sees her. Then, there were cries in the night haze, words in a once heard tongue. The air rustling above us as at dawn with herons. Now it is I who must bring fear. I who am four days dead. The tears still unshed for me, all of them. I for whom a child still calls at nightfall. Death is young in me to fear. My dress is kept still in the press in my bedchamber. No one has broken the dish of the dead woman. Nevertheless, I must speak painfully. I am to stand here in the sun and speak. The city of masterless men will take a master. There will be shouting then, blood after. <laughs> do not ask what it means. I do not know. Only sorrow and no hope for it. It is hard to return from the time past. I have come in the dream. We must learn to dream where the crumbling of time, like the ash from a burnt string, has stopped for me. For you, the thread still burns. You take the feathery ash upon your fingers. You bring yourselves from the time past as it pleases you. It is hard to return to the old nearness. Harder to go again. She is gone. We know because the crowd is closing. That was Daniel Stone reporting live from the central plaza of the city. Thank you for that update, Daniel. For those of you just joining us, this is Global Web's Prime News. I'm Anna Marie Hammond. Time is running out for the ultimatum delivered to the Conqueror, who is now approaching the city. Prime News coverage continues after this. You're listening to Reimagined Radio and our performance of The Fall of the City by Archibald MacLeish.
first broadcast April 11, 1939 as an episode of the Columbia Workshop radio series, the unique verse style of this story still resonates. Included in our performance are samples from Great Day for a War by Jack J. Ward, which works well to provide a contemporary context. We'll return to our story in just a moment. Reimagined Radio partners with other radio programs, producers, and actors to bring you a variety of radio storytelling. One example is The Fusebox Show. Freeform but focused, appropriate for all age groups and audiences, Fusebox shares observations and reactions to world and cultural events we cannot ignore. It's a different kind of radio storytelling, but one we are proud to support. Here's a sample. How many golf balls must there be off the coast of Florida? Enough to bury Mar-a-Lago to its gold-plated turrets? We live in the age of sloppy in plain sight. Mmm, sloppy. Catch Fusebox the first Wednesday of the month at 12.30 p.m. here on KXRW 99.9. Learn more at the Fusebox Show website, www.thefuseboxshow.com. This is Reimagined Radio. I'm John Barber, producer and host. Welcome back. This episode is The Fall of the City, performed by the Willamette Radio Workshop and The Voices. Archibald MacLeish claimed two historical events as inspiration for The Fall of the City. The first was the unopposed 1521 conquest of the Aztec city Tenochtitlan, now Mexico City, by Hernán Cortés of Spain. The second was Nazi Germany's uncontested annexation of Austria just before the start of World War II. The fall of the city, MacLeish says, was not about the conqueror, but rather about the way people lose or sustain the burden of freedom. It takes effort to maintain freedom. People may not be willing to devote the effort, thinking someone else will protect freedom for them. Daniel Stone has reported the appearance of the dead woman in the city plaza. Let's continue listening to The Fall of the City. Around the globe, on the web across all boundaries, transmitted simultaneously in 128 languages to more than 200 countries, Global Web Network News, the news you can trust. With the people you know, Daniel Stone and Anna Marie Hammond. Good evening. I'm Anna Marie Hammond. To recap our story, after years of failed sanctions and negotiations, the president has issued an ultimatum calling for the conqueror to stop its advance on the city. Speaking live from the border, the president addressed a coalition of troops gathered there, but did not say unequivocally what would happen if the conqueror failed to heed his ultimatum. Daniel Stone is on location where he has been providing live reports from the city's central plaza. Daniel, what can you tell us about the situation there? We hear the releasing of held breath, the weight shifting, the lifting of shoe leather. The stillness is broken as surface of water is broken, the sound circling from in, outward. Small wonder they feel fear. Before the murders of the famous kings, before imperial cities burned and fell, the dead were said to show themselves and speak. When dead men came, disaster came. Presentiments that let the living on their beds sleep on woke dead men out of death and gave them voices. All ancient men in every nation knew this. Masterless men? When shall it be? Masterless men will take a master! What has she said to us? When shall it be? Masterless men will take a master! Blood after! What has she said to us? Blood after! 
They are milling around us like cattle that smell death. All square is whirling and turning and shouting. One of the ministers raises his arms on the platform. No one is listening. Now they're sounding drums, trying to quiet them likely. No, no. Something is happening. There in the far corner, a, a runner, a, a messenger, a staggering. People are helping him. People are calling. Comes through the crowd. They're, they're quieter. Only those on the far edge are still shouting. Listen. He's here by the ministers now. There has come the conqueror. He's speaking. I, I am to tell you. I have raced over sea land. I, I have run over cane land. I have climbed over cone land. It was laid on my shoulders by shall and by shant that standing by day and staying by night were not for my lot till I came to the sight of you. Now I have come. Be warned of this conqueror. This one is dangerous. Word has outawed him. East over sea crosses all taken every country. No men are free there. Ears overhear them. Their words are their murderers. Judged before judgment, tried after trial, they die as do animals. Offer their throats as the goat to her slaughterer. Terror has taught them this. Now he is here. I tell you, beware of him. All doors are dangers. The warders of wealth will admit him by stealth. The lovers of men will invite him as friend. The drinkers of blood will drum him in suddenly. Hope will unlatch to him. Hopelessness open. I say, and say truly to all men in honesty, such is this conqueror. Shame is his people, liquors of spittle. Their lives are unspeakable. They're dying, indecent. Watch, I have said to you. They are leading him out. His legs give. Now he's gone in the crowd. They're silent. No one has spoken since he's speaking. They stand still, circling the ministers. No one has spoken out or called out. There is no stir at all or movement. Even the farthest have stood patiently. They wait, trusting the old men. They wait faithfully, trusting the answer. Now the huddle on the platform opens. A minister turns to them, raising her two arms. Free men of this nation, the persuasion of your wills against your wisdom is not dreamed of. We offer themes for your consideration. What is the surest defender of liberty? Is it not liberty? A free people resists by freedom, not locks, not blockhouses. The future is a mirror where the past marches to meet itself. Go armed toward arms, peaceful toward peace, free and with music toward freedom. Face tomorrow with knives and tomorrow's a knife blade. Murder your foe and your foe will be murder. Even your friends suspected of false speaking, hands on the door at night and the floorboards squeaking. Those who win by the spear are the spear toters. And what do they win? Spears. What else is there? If their hands let go, they have nothing to hold by. They are no more free than a paralytic propped against a tree is. With the armored man, the arm is upheld by the weapon. The man is worn by the knife. I wish you could all see this as we do. The whole plaza full of these people. The colorful garments, the harsh sunlight. The water cellars swinging enormous gourds. The orator there on the stone platform. The temple behind her. The high pyramid. The hawks overhead in the sky, teetering. Slow to the windward, swift to the downwind. The houses blind with the blank sun on them. Once depend on iron for your freedom and your freedom's iron. Once overcome your resistors with force and your force will resist you. You will never be free of force. Never of arms unarmed will the father return home. The lover to her loved. The mature man to his fruit orchard. Walking at peace in that beauty the years of his trees to assure him. Force is a greater enemy than this conqueror. A treacherous weapon. 
Nevertheless, my friends, there is a weapon. Weakness conquers. Against chainlessness, who breaks? Against wallessness, who vaults? Against forcelessness, who forces? Against the feather of the thistle is blunted sharpest metal. No edge cuts seed fluff. This conqueror, unresisted, will conquer no longer. A uh, posture beating his blows upon burdocks, shifting his guard against shadows. Snickers will sound among road menders. Titters be stifled by laundresses. Coarse guffaws among chambermaids. Reddened, he will rage with roar. He will sweat in his uniform foolishly. He will disappear. No one hear of him. There is a weapon, my friends. Reason and truth are that weapon. Let this conqueror come. Show him no hindrance. Suffer his flag and his drum. Words win! Thank you, Daniel, for the first-hand report. And apologies for interrupting. But we have just learned the president will speak momentarily. We go live now to the president's press briefing. My fellow citizens... A great crisis is upon us, and a time of great faith is tasked of all of us. I ask for your faith. I ask for your belief that we are doing all we can to end this struggle and bring truth and justice back to the city and the world. That was the president speaking to the press conference just now. With me in the studio is Colonel Jeffrey Brockenswitch. Welcome, Colonel. Miss Hammond. Colonel, what is your assessment of the situation in the city? Well, in any conflagration of this type, you've got three major phases. One, open actions. Two, control and security. And three, the rebuilding of the infrastructure. Now, I didn't think the first phase would be as particularly troubling. Now, that being said, we've overcome that hurdle. The trick now is finding our way into phase two and making sure the area remains pacified from further aggression. Thank you, Colonel, for your insight. I hope you will stay close as I'll want to call on you again. But right now, let's return to Daniel Stone, who is live in the city. Daniel, what is the situation there in the Central Plaza? She's climbing down a great speech. They're all smiling and pressing around her. The women are squatting in full sunlight. They're opening packages. Bread, we'd say, by the look. Yes, bread. Bread wrapped between maize leaves. They're squatting to eat. They're quite contented and happy. Women are calling their men from the sunny stones. The flutes sounding a way off. We can't see for the shifting and moving. Yes, there are flutes in the cool shadow. Children are dancing in intricate figures. <laughs> Even a few old men are dancing. You'd say they'd never feared to see them dancing. That's odd. The music has stopped. There's something. It's a man there on the far side. He's pointing. He seems to be pointing back through the farthest street. The people are twisting and rising, bread in their fist. We can't see what it is. Wait. It's a messenger. It, it must be a messenger. Yes, it's a message. Another. Here he is at the turn of the street, trotting. His neck's back at the nape. He looks tired. He winds through the crowd with his mouth open, laboring. People are offering water. He pushes away from them. Now he has come to the stone steps to the ministers. It's stand by. We're edging in. There has come the conqueror. Listen, he's leaning on the stone. He's speaking. I am to tell you, I have run over Cornland. I have climbed over Coneland. I have crossed over mountains. It was laid on my shoulders by Shal and by Shant that standing by day and staying by night were not for my lot till I came to the sight of you. Now I have come. I bear word. Beware of this conqueror. The fame of his story, like flame in the winter grass, widens before him. Beached on our shore. With the dawn over shoulder, the lawns were still cold when he came to the sheep meadows. Sun could not keep with him, so was he forward. Fame is his sword. No man opposing him still grows his glory. He needs neither foemen nor thick set of blows to gather his victories. 
nor a foe's match to earn him his battles. He brings his own enemy. He baggages with him his closet antagonist, his private opposer. He's setting him up at every road corner. A figure of horror, with blood for his color. Fist for his hand, reek where he stands. Hate for his heat, sneers for his mouth, clouts for his clothes, oaths if he speak. And he's knocking him down in every town square, till hair's on his blade. And blood's all about like dust in a drought. And the people are shouting, flowers him flinging, music him singing, and bringing him gold and holding his heels, and feeling his thighs till their eyes start and their hearts swell. And they're telling his praises like lays of the heroes and chiefs of antiquity. Such are his victories. So does he come. So he approaches. No man to conquer, yet as a conqueror marches he forward. Stands in your mountains, soon to descend on you. That touched them. That frightened them. Some of them point to the East Hills. Some of them mock the ministers. Freedom? Freedom from what? The Diana Rat Trap? They're frantic with anger and plain fear. They've sold us out, they say. You can hear them. Down with the government. Down with the orators. Down with the liberal learned minds. Down with the mouths and the loose tongues in them. Down with the lazy lot. They've sold us. We're sold out. Talking has done for us. They're boiling around us like mullet that have smelled shark. We can't move with the mob. They're crazy with terror. There's a voice over the crowd somewhere. I hear it, quieting down. It's the priests. We see them now. It's the priests on the pyramid. There might be ten of them, black with their hair tangled. The smoke of their fire is flat in the quick wind. They stand in the thick of the smoke by the stone of the victims. Their knives catch in the steep sun. Turn to your gods, remember us. They're shouting. Listen. Let the world be saved. By surrendering the world, not otherwise shall it be saved. Turn to your gods, remember us. Let evil be overcome by the coming over of evil. Your hearts shall be elsewhere. Turn to your gods, remember us. Turn to your gods. The conqueror cannot take you. Turn, Turn to your gods. The narrow dark will keep you. Turn to your gods! In God's house is no breaking! Turn to your gods! In God's silences sleep is! Lay up your will with the gods! Stones cannot still you! Lay up your mind with the gods! Blade cannot blind you! Lay up your heart with the gods! Danger departs from you! It's a wonderful thing to see this crowd responding. Even the simplest citizens feel the emotion. There's hardly a sound now in the square. It's wonderful, really impressive. The priests there on the pyramid, with the smoke blowing, the bright sun, the faces. Thank you, Daniel. We'll be back to you in a moment. But right now, I want to bring Colonel Brockenswitch back into the conversation. Colonel, do we have a timetable for stability in the city? It's, uh, it's too soon to tell. As you know, there's a lot of action still going on in the city, and we're going to need to make certain we have the full country under control before we can guarantee that the infrastructure can be rebuilt and a government reinstituted. So that's a no. We'll be back in a moment with Daniel Stone live from the city. Daniel can hopefully shed a little light on this situation. Hard won or hardly won? back in a moment. You're listening to Reimagined Radio. Our episode is The Fall of the City a reimagined combination of the original by Archibald MacLeish and Great Day for a War by Jack J. Ward. Excellent radio storytelling like The Fall of the City showcases skilled use of voice, sound effects, and music, combined in proportions to spark your imagination. Here is an example. Hello? Hello? Stop ringing me, do you hear? 
Answer me, who is this? Do you realize you're driving me crazy? Who's calling me? What are you doing it for? Now stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Hello? Hello? I... If you don't stop ringing me, I'm going to call the police. Do you hear? The police! Without thinking, blindly, I started the car across the tracks. He didn't even look up at me. He was staring at the ground. I stepped on the gas hard, veering the wheel sharply toward him. I could hear the train in the distance now, but I didn't care. Then something went wrong with the car. It stole right on the tracks. The train was coming closer. I could hear its bell, its cry, its whistle crying. Still, he stood there. Now I knew that he was beckoning me. Beckoning me to my death. Upcoming episodes of Reimagined Radio will follow this lead. For example, we plan a look at four radio stories that may have inspired the War of the Worlds the most famous radio broadcast ever. Please join us as we share these interesting stories. Let's return now to The Fall of the City, performed by the Willamette Radio Workshop and The Voices. This is Global Web Prime News. I'm Anna Marie Hammond with live coverage of the unfolding situation in the city. Daniel Stone is there and has been providing reports. Daniel, what is the situation there now? Thank you, Anne Marie. A confrontation between the crowd and the priest continues. Perhaps you can hear as I hold up the microphone. In the day of confusion of reason, when all is delusion. In the day of the tyrants of tongues, when the truth is for hire. In the day of deceit, when ends meet. Turn to your gods! In the day of division of nations, when hope is derision. In the day of the supping of hate, when the soul is corrupted. In the day of despair, when the hearts bear. Turn to your gods! A kind of dance is beginning. A serpent of people, a current of people, coiling and curling through people, a circling of people through people like water through water. Out of the stir of the sun, out of the shout of the thunder, out of the hush of the storm, withdraw the heart! A very young girl is leading them. Torn the shawl from her bare breast. They're giving her flowers. Her mouth laughs. Her eyes are not laughing. Leave now the lovely heir to to the sword and the sword wearer. Leave to the marksman the mark. Withdraw the heart! It's coming. The drums pound. The crowd shrieks. He's reaching the temple. He's climbing it. Others are following. Five, ten, hundreds are following. Crowding the stairways. He's almost there. Her flowers have fallen. She looks back. The priests are surrounding her. Wait! Wait, something has happened. One of the ministers, one of the oldest, the general, the the one in the feathered coat. He's driving them down with the staff of a banner. He's climbed after them, driving them down. They're shouting and yelling enough, but they're going. He's telling them off, too. You can hear them. Men! Old men! Listen! Twist your necks on your nape bones! The knife will wait in the fist for you. There is a time for everything. Time to be thinking of heaven. Time of your own skins. Cock your eyes to the windward. Do you see smoke on those mountains? The smoke is the smoke of towns. And who makes it? The conqueror. And where will he march now? Onward! The heel of the future descends on you. He has them now. Even the priests have seen it. They're all looking away here to the east. There's smoke, too, filling the valleys like thunderheads. You are foolish old men. You ought to be flogged for your foolishness. Your grandfathers died to be free, and you, you juggle with freedom. Do you think you're free by a law? 
like the falling of apples in autumn? You thought you were safe in your liberties. You thought you could always quibble. You can't. You take my word for it. Freedom's the rarest bird. You risk your neck to snare it. It's gone while your eyeballs stare. Those who'd lodge with a tyrant, thinking to feed at his fire and leave him again when they're fed are plain fools. Or were bred to it. Brood of the servo races, born with the hangdog face. They're all pointing and pushing together. The women are shouldering baskets, bread, children. They smell smoke in the air. They smell terror. There's nothing in this world worse. Empty belly or purse or the pitiful hunger of children than doing the strong man's will. The free will fight for their freedom. They're free men first. They feed, meager or fat, but as free men, everything else comes after. Food, roof, craft, even the sky and the light of it. The sun is yellow with smoke. The town's burning. The war's at the broken bridge. You! Are you free? Will you fight? There are still inches for fighting. There is still a niche in the streets. You can stand on the stairs and meet him. You can hold in the dark of a hall. You can die. Or your children will crawl for it. They won't listen. The shouting and screaming and circling. The square is full of deserters with more coming. Every street from the bridge is full of deserters. They're rolling in with the smoke blowing behind them. The plaza's choked with the smoke and the struggling of stragglers. They're climbing the platform, driving the minister, shouting. One speaks and another. The city is doomed. There's no holding it. Our institutions are obsolete. He marches a mile while we sit in a meeting. Opinions and talk. Deliberative walks beneath the ivy and the creeper. The age demands a made of mind. The cover of mind is the sight of everything. His doubt comes after the deed. Or never. He knows what he wants for his wants what he knows. He's gone before they say he's going. He's come before you've barred your house. He's one man from thousands. Who can defend us from one man? Bear your arms. Break your standards. Give him the town while the town stands. They're throwing their arms away. Their bows are in bonfires. The plaza is littered with torn plumes, spear handles. Order must master us. Freedom for fools forces the certainty. Freedom has eaten our strength and corrupted our virtue. Men must be. Rigor and fast will restore us our dignity. Chains will be liberty! The last defenders are coming. They whirl from the streets like wild leaves on a wind. The square scatters them. Now they are fewer. Ten together. Five. They come with their heads turned, their eyes back. Now there are none. The street's empty. In shadow. The crowd is retreating. Watching the empty street, the shouts die, the voices are silent, they're watching. They stand in the slant of the sunlight, silent and watching. The silence after the drums echoes the drum beat. Now there's a sound. They see him. They must see him. They're shading their eyes from the sun, there's a rustle of whispering. They can't see for the glare of it. Yes. Yes. He's there in the end of the street in the shadow. We see him. It's huge. A head taller than anyone else. As broad as a brass door. A hard hero. Heavy of heel on the brick. Clanking with metal. The helm closed on his head. The eye holes hollow. He's coming. He's clear of the shadow. The sun takes him. They cover their faces with fingers. They cower before him, they fall, they sprawl on the stone. He's alone where he's walking. He marches with rattled metal. He tramples his shadow. He mounts by the pyramid, stamps on the stairway, turns. His arm rises. His visor is opening. It's no one. It's no one at all. No one. Her helmet is hollow. A metal 
is empty. The armor is empty. I, I tell you, there's, there's no one there at all. There's, it's only the metal, the, the barrel of metal, the bundle of armor. It's, it's empty. The push of a stiff pull at the nipple would topple it. They don't see. They lie on the paving. They lie in the burnt spears, the ashes of arrows. They lie there. They don't see or won't see. They're silent. The people invent their oppressors. They wish to believe in them. They wish to be free of their freedom, released from their liberty. The long labor of liberty ended. They lie there. Look, it's his arm. It's rising. His arm's rising. They're watching his arm as it rises. They stir. They cry. They cry out. They're shouting. They're shouting with happiness. Listen, they're shouting like troops in a victory. Listen! The city of masterless men has found a master. You'd say it was they were the conquerors. They that had conquered. For that report, Daniel. What, what do you think happens next? I don't know, Emily. The crowd is beginning to disperse. People are drifting away. The empty suit of armor remains where it stopped, one arm raised. But, but, but oh, yeah, here's something interesting. Someone in the crowd just handed me a thick envelope no explanation, just walked away. What is it, Daniel? Documents, Anne-Marie. Uh, hard copies, faxes, copies of emails, all showing that the events leading up to today's events here in the city were engineered by the Global Web Corporation, all to provide prime viewing during sweeps weeks. You can't be serious. I wish that was the case, Anne-Marie. It is grotesque use of the media, and of the newsroom specifically. I have memos showing dates and times. Apparently, someone was given access to highlight certain stories, pay off various agencies, to edit reports, even plant incriminating evidence. Certainly, Sweeps Week represents internationally billions of dollars in commercial revenues, and traditionally, viewership always goes up in times of crises. And according to our own records... Our viewership has gone up. Nearly 15 points. Dear, what, what do we do with this information? I'm uploading it to our private web server now. Let me know when you can see it. Yes. It's here, Daniel. I can see it. How quickly can you get it hooked up to the search engines? They're here, all around me. Police officers, military. It's them! Get the word out. Put this information on every mirror server you can. You don't worry about me. I'll destroy this computer. In a time. Get the information out! Get it! Get it! The fall of the city story is completed. Do you wish to view another clip? Click yes to continue. You've selected no. Proceeding to electronic checkout. Thank you. Your total will be $9.99. Please select electronic payment type. Thank you for watching Global Web News Coverage around the globe, on the web across all boundaries, transmitted simultaneously in 128 languages to more than 200 countries. Global Web Network News, the news you can trust.
You just listened to The Fall of the City, performed by the Willamette Radio Workshop, including the voices of Sam A. Mowry, Chris Porter, Linda Gertz, Holly Spencer, Tim McKinney, Ricardo Delgado, Mark Hamiyun, Adam S. Moore, and Atticus Mowry. Sound design and engineering by Mark Rose. Recording by Richard Kowal and Michael Gancy. Foley conductor, Martin J. Gallagher. Produced by Sam A. Mowry, Robert Kowal, and Mark Rose. Co-producer, Cynthia McGeehan. Directed by Sam A. Mowry. These samples from Great Day for a War by Jack J. Ward were performed by Sam A. Mowry as Daniel Stone, Mago Weston as Anna Marie Hammond, Sam Gregory as Global News Announcer, Eric Newsom as Global News Service Announcer and the President, Stephanie Crowley as Sheila McDonald, produced by Special Arrangement with Jack J. Ward. I'm John Barber, producer and host. I'll be back with closing remarks after this short break. Reimagined Radio and other programs heard on this station depend on your support. Every donation helps this station provide interesting and thought-provoking programs like Reimagined Radio. If you already support community radio through your generosity, thank you. If not, please contact your community radio station and learn how to donate. Your support is valuable, much appreciated, and may be tax-deductible. Thank you for your support. For this episode of Reimagined Radio, we combined The Fall of the City by Archibald MacLeish and samples from Great Day for a War by Jack J. Ward. Great Day for a War focuses on the power of mass media to fabricate spectacle and conflict to benefit its own standing. Our thanks to Jack Ward for allowing us to sample from his unpublished script. The Fall of the City was first broadcast April 11, 1937, as an episode of the Columbia Workshop. Written by McLeish, Pulitzer Prize-winning poet, writer, and librarian of Congress, in the form of a radio broadcast, The Fall of the City was the first American verse play for radio. The Fall of the City is often cited as the best example of the artistic potential of radio broadcasting in terms of both stylistic innovation and social power. This episode of Reimagined Radio is a tribute to this artistry of radio storytelling. Script adaptations for this episode by John Barber. Music composition, sound design, and post-production by Mark Rose of Fuse. Our presence on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram is provided by Regina Carroll Social Media Management. Graphic design by Holly Slocum Design. Our announcer is Jack Armstrong. This is John Barber, producer and host. In addition to social media, look for Reimagined Radio on SoundCloud and the Internet Archive. Thank you for listening. This has been a production of Reimagined Radio. Our radio broadcasts are heard on local, regional, and international community radio stations. For on-demand streaming, point your browsers to our website, Reimagined Radio, that's all one word, no punctuation, dot net. While you're there, subscribe to our snappy email program guide. Thank you so much for listening, and please join us again for another episode of Reimagined Radio, where we'll continue our exploration of radio storytelling. And that's this week's show. Check out all our show notes on sonicsociety.org for Reimagined Radio. And please see us back here next week for more amazing works from the world of sound. Until then, I'm David Alt. And I'm Jack Ward. Have a lovely morning, everyone. Yeah, have a grand day. The summer stock will be coming up soon as well. Oh, goodness.
I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I might actually be able to do something this year. That'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> that would be good. Yes. <laughs> Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt, with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. Thanks for listening. us here at the Mutual Audio Network. We thank all our listeners and creators for making us an award-winning home for four seasons of audio drama and audio fiction.